DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. I think it's yes. There's one, two, there's three of us on screen. Yay! Yeah, we made it. Yay! We're only we're only three minutes late. That's not too bad. I mean, there was at one time we were four minutes late, so that was like really bad. Uh, it was terrible. Ugh, can't believe. I'm gonna pull us up. I like watching us. Yeah. <laughs> that just didn't sound right. Yeah, now. Now it does So we'll tonight, <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. Uh, oh, we're, sorry. Folks are join, jumping into the, the rooms there. Thank you once again for being with us tonight. Um, so we just finished up the the Ask Ben Stowe Anything, and we had a great time with that. Uh, I think at some future show, we're going to do an Ask Jay Brannon Anything. Nice. nice. That one should be interesting because what... There's going to be two questions in that show. Well, there'll be two questions, but I think that every... It's 7, 1, 7, 30. Every and another thing. Answer, every answer Jay gives... We have to. Re we need to refute. Whatever oh. he says, we're going the other direction. All if right. he says sky's blue, it's not blue. It's something. Nope. There's, so that'll be the. And then we're going to make the argument and see if people think that Jay's argument is is legit or if ours <laughs> is better. And by yes. the way, anytime I say and I record the vows as part of the new drinking game, you do a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I record the vows. There's been conversation uh, about, oh, wow, Jay and Brian don't have the same ideas on a lot of things. Yeah. And you should talk to people who don't think just like you once in a while as well. Yeah. Because yeah. you might learn something. Welcome, Angry Brian, everybody. Angry <laughs> Brian on the show this week. <laughs> Wait a second. Isn't he badass? I thought that was badass. Was that Whoa, uh, listen to the language you got John speaking. Hey, I'm just saying. That's what I heard on video. <laughs> I just heard it on video somewhere. You're a bad in. That's how he rolls, man. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So tonight, what our topic, what I wanted to have the guys hit on a little bit this evening, is how to wrap up the end of the event. We're getting to the end of the night. How do you do that? Maybe your favorite set, maybe some of your favorite songs. If you have a a methodology that you know that's your way of doing it, and it is the, and this is for you guys out there in the chat room too. Put that down into the chat room and kind of share with us. Like if you have your favorite set that you always like to have as a crescendo of the party, or if you like to bring the party down, whatever. Put that into the uh, chat room and let us know, and we'll be talking about those and uh, what we do ourselves. So. Awesome. Gentlemen, when we have those nights, do you have a set way of ending or how do you handle the end of the night? Um, if I go first, I, I tend to try to keep the BPM range a little more in the 120s, maybe one teens, 120s towards the end. We've had this discussion about timing, so I'll use literal timing. 
most of my events, let's say weddings, photography will leave usually an hour before the event ends. So if the event ends at 11, I'm finishing everything up by 10. So I've got that 10 to 11 realm that I can kind of just play some dance music. And, you know, you're always reading the crowd. Is they're dispersing or slowing down or speeding up? You're reacting to it. I genuinely try to bring it up. I've always tried my best to end weddings on two last songs, one for the group, one for the bride and groom. So the intention is always, it's a wedding. You don't want people at the end of it to be screaming like, no way, it's not over. Yeah, that's a sign of success maybe, but I always find it's also a sign that you didn't really do your job as the DJ for a wedding because you want them to know this was a wedding. So I will oftentimes, the, for the families especially that aren't on the dance floor, let's say at 10 of 10, I'll say, folks, want to invite all of you who aren't on the dance floor to join the bride and groom for a special dedication from the two of them to all of you. It can be anything from Journey, Don't Stop Believing. My country brides a lot of times will do Keith Urban, Making Memories. You've got a friend, Time of Your Life. Um, I've actually, Brian and I talked years about this, and one of the tracks he got me to bring in there was Daft Punk, One More Time, because it's got that breakdown, and then it comes back up at the tail. And it's just to get people really fired up, because once they hear it's about to end, they all kind of join in if they're not. And then I try to I try to end on one last slow song. My issue is this. If you end at 11 for an 11 o'clock ending where I am, it's because of a noise variance. Mm-hmm because they're all outside now, and most of them were anyway, people, you, you don't have the luxury of just one more. No, that's that's not on the table. The only way around that would be to end at five of. And if yeah. they're really freaking out, say, okay, one more, knowing that you're five minutes ahead. But I, I genuinely try to bring it, as I tell my clients, I'll say in a meeting, this is what I've done in the past and it worked really well. What do you think? Do you like the idea of doing one last group song and then one last slow. And sometimes they'll say, you know what, let's end on a fast song. We really just want that. Then that's how we'll do it. But I think the client should be involved in the conversation because once it's over, the reality is we've all gone through a marriage and a wedding. It's over. Like, Hey, congratulations. Woo. Everyone starts bailing. Like you can clear out a wedding crowd of 120 minutes at the end of the night. And the bride and groom are kind of left there. So you want to make sure they have time, you know, ask questions. Are most of your guests staying? Are most of your guests leaving? Did they travel? You know, I think it's important that, because trust me when I say this, I've had bad endings. I've had the mother and mother-in-law and stepmother get in an argument in front of the bride. And that's the last memory. Mm-hmm. I want the last memory to be something loving. I ended one that Brian should appreciate where, and the bride tried to hire me again, but her wedding just canceled um, for her parents' anniversary. And she said, I want something different for the end of the night and I want it to be memorable. So I said, having just seen Goodfellas the night before, you know, to be cool, I'll play the tail end of Layla, starting with the piano as your last song of the night. And it was, it went over like, I couldn't believe she loved it. The, everybody loved it because it was like, I've never heard anyone play just half of a song. And it became her memory that people mentioned down the road, because that's what your clients are going to say to you down the road. Wow. I went to another wedding and the DJ just stopped and said, Hey, good night. And it didn't feel like it really closed. So that's sort of my rambled ending of a wedding and things. <laughs> Now, this is where Brian goes, Jay, you ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> I knew it was wrong. I just, um, yeah, just, just needed out. validation. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it my turn? Yeah, you're up. You're up. Yep. Your mic's on. I'm going to try to go back and remember everything he talked about because he hit like 50 bullet points. And it's, it's hard now. to remember everything Jay talks about when Jay monologues. But. I remember Jay telling me what he did with one more time, which I really liked. He was talking about how you end with, or you, towards the end of the night, you do a slow song for the end of the night. And then instead of jumping into one more time, 
he would come in on the break. So yeah. it was kind of a slow song, and people would continue to slow dance to it. So you don't come at the beginning of the song, you come in at the end. And I have a 12 inch of that that's extended, and it's really good that I use to do that once in a while. I totally bit that from Jay, and I use it, and it's a really good idea. Yeah, I remember you and I literally going to a wedding, and I'm like, hey, what do you think of this idea? And you're like, oh, that'd be cool. And I'm like, I should start it here. And you're like, totally, that would work because then you'd have slow to slow and you can actually talk because then they say, you know, tonight, celebrate, tonight, one more time, and it builds. So yeah, I, let's it, give Betty and Jay a big round of applause for throwing this cool party for us, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great talk over You guys party. had a great time. Tip yeah, your we'll <laughs> waitresses, whatever. Try to clam, yeah. beat her all week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's really good. Now, you know, in my market, sometimes, not often, but sometimes the client will actually say, well, for the last song of the night, we want this particular track. And when they say that, I don't even argue. I mean, sometimes it's Billy Joel, Piano Man. Sometimes it's something. I mean, I used to, years ago, and it's, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just don't do it anymore. But I used to try to take their first dance song and end with it. Mm -hmm. And then that would give others an opportunity to come out and dance to it as well. And then they could have one more dance. That's a great idea. That was one thing that I, I used to do a lot. But I really don't like ending on a slow tune. And I think that has to do with, and maybe it's a generational thing, but concerts. Whenever you go to a concert in the old days, they, they may end on a slow track or a down tip of track and then they leave. And they come back for the encore with the banger. It's like left you with something big. Yeah. And I think I'm programmed to think that's a really cool way to end the evening. But to pick the perfect track is tough. It really is because you want to end on a high note. There are times where I guess I've held tracks back because I just wanted those songs to be the last song of the night. Right. I've done everything from Rob Bass and DJ Rock. It, it takes two. That was a big one. And that's the kind of thing you do if you haven't really done a lot of that all night. And it's a surprise song. Mm -hmm. I've done Run DMC's Tricky. I've done Push It. Uh, those I've done all kinds of stuff. It just really kind of depends. Or if there was a big song that I played early in the night. Like, I don't know. Let's just say Uptown Funk. And it went crazy. You still got a big group. That, hey, let's just do this one more time before we get out of here. You throw Uptown Funk on again. It's a nice way to end as well. So... I, I like to end on a high, but it really kind of depends on what the client wants to do. I have one coming up this weekend where they have a sparkler send off mm. and they said, we'll play the last song and then send everybody outside for the sparkler send off. I've got to look and see kind of what they like for music. But in my brain, I'm thinking Katy Perry firework. That That's I was just getting you absolutely yeah. read my mind. They say sparkler. I play fireworks mm -hmm. and it, it never fails because it gets people in the mindset of like, what's going on? Oh, sparklers. Oh, wow. Oh, this is awesome. And it just, it brings it up. Even if they're not people that normally get excitable, right. it really does set the tone. Yeah. That's a great call. Great call. Yeah. We never agree with anything. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what I mean is that sucks. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. You don't know what you're talking about. No, you're a jerk. Sparklers. I don't like you. Uh, I would have totally played typo negative. Love you to death. You don't know it. <laughs> yeah. Um, or John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band. That would of course. Yeah, that's always a good on one. On the dark side, because the sparklers go out. Get I always think when you say that, I always think tender years. Yeah. Well, like I try because on the dark side, it's kind of cool. I always kind of think yeah. it's lame. I thought tender years is kind of a lame track. But Maybe it's a great track. And I'm hey, I'm dying. starting to think plim every time I say it, I'm hearing plimsolls million miles away in my head. <laughs> I'm now adding a band onto a band, so don't ask me. How about you, John? How do you like to end a night? If it's up to you. Yeah, if, if it's up to okay, me. So anyway, what I like to do, Brian, again, <laughs> go ahead, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's all about timing. It's all about timing. Yeah. So, so the the idea, I, I really like that idea of kind of bringing it down a little bit and then coming back with the, in essence, that encore. Um, Jay mentioned the timing of of having the, you know, kind of wrapping it up at five two, um, and I, that's a discussion I've actually had with with many couples, uh, you know, over the last few years. Is is you know, okay, when do you want? How do you want? How do we want to do that ending? How do we want to wrap up the night? And 
now we want to have something that's really kind of cool. We want to have, a, you know, where people are, are kind of, you know, cheering and wanting more. It's like, cool. The venue needs to have us done at midnight. We cannot go 1201. That's just the hard thing. Right. And it's like, okay, so if we can back it up and let's just say we're going to, you know, start doing that wrap up and do that last little song and end it at quarter two. And then we're going to come back and hit bang, 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 right till, right till the top of the hour. So people are going to be jumping and bouncing and, and ready to go. And then we, the lights come on at midnight. Like it or not, their yeah. ugly lights are on at midnight. Um, yeah. I'm using it, a Windows machine. Sometimes I'll I'll log off and I'll leave the volume turned up so you hear the windows doo -doo 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 or whatever, you know, so he's like, okay, <laughs> computer's off, dude. It's over. <laughs> it's yeah. time to it's, go it's home. Time. Yeah. Um, so that that's you know that kind of concept and and whether it's holding some songs back and certainly we've all done that uh, or trying to have you know there's a, a few songs that just are kind of have gone to that area um, you know let's go crazy from Prince is one that uh, if if I can if I have the right crowd that's going to be one of those last three songs. Do you because, ever do the the extended version of that, John? Uh, I play I think the six minute version. Yeah, that's the one with the really cool breaks in the b section I, yeah, like every, your, yes and at the concert when you play that one i used to love playing that at the clubs yeah that's the one that i prefer and that's usually the last one because then if for some people who have no idea who it is they're like oh it's been a great day we had a great time and then there's the people who are prince fans and know the song or whatever right. and, and dearly beloved and being minnesota and that's got to be it works it works really well so that's usually one of the the anchor of that particular i think, I think they call set. that the special dance mix I think it is. I don't remember exactly uh, anymore. It's the the one that uh, has, and then and then you know to set that up, I usually like to play Lola's theme because I hear that's a really hot track. It's the best. I, I hear. That's well, I've been told. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I got to do is say E near me, and I'm like, oh, did you say EDM? You want to hear Lola's theme? Because I got shape shifters. I got like 19 verses. <laughs> so what you said? Oh, you said E the network. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I can't help you there. You jumped the gun. So, so yeah, that's M &M. The, that's that. How to to end it, um, to wrap a night up, and have it so <laughs> that it's something e exciting and fun. I, the the events that I just feel like I've I've, I've I don't want to say failed as a DJ is where you've had it where they're like, oh, we're gonna go till midnight. Well, your day started at noon. You want to go yeah. till midnight. This is way right. over, t way too long of a day for you. And then it just you know you, you're there like we should have ended at ten. Or we should have ended at eleven, and maybe up. Oh, we want to go till midnight, and there's like five people left. I, right. I just, I, I feel like I've there's so much opportunity to have that last memory of a fun, a going dance floor. And what's their memory of that? Well, the DJ wrapped up as we were, you know, folding linens, you know, for the tables type of thing. So that's well, a discussion. I, I, I like think we've had that talk about it's got to end, and this is. I know it'll sound fake, but I swear to you, it's true. I did the director of ticket sales for the Padres, San Diego Padres, years ago. Um, and we he had seen me at another wedding for another person that worked for the organization, hired me, get to the wedding. We're good to go. It ends at 11. And I'd given him the like 10 of, 5 of, 11. It's a hard ending because the hotel will charge you. Yes. They want us gone. And just as a parenthesis side note, there are military bases where I work where they will say to me, and they have done this to other DJs, if you are finishing the song at 11, we are hitting a circuit breaker. We, you will not finish it. So when we say done at 11, what we mean is at five minutes of 11, you're saying good night. You're not playing music. Mm -hmm. And again, these are venues that, you know, your bride and groom can say, Hey man, we love Jay. We love John. We love Brian. We're going to bring him in. And the venue has the final say because they can look at your vendor list and go, yeah, they're not allowed here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, there, at least in my area, there is a juggling match there, but I did the ticket director of ticket sales for the Padres. It's about 10 25. We're at the Hilton in San Diego or the Hyatt. I'm sorry, downtown. I'll never forget. And I watched all these guys start putting their suit coats on. And they're getting up and I'm like, it's going really well. And I ran over to the groom and I said, I'm going to play the last group song was journey. Don't stop believing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to play your last song. He goes, what time is it? I said, it's 10 30. You'll be done by 10 40. He goes, we ended 11. I said, people by 11, we won't have half this crowd. They're getting ready to leave. They've had enough. He goes, no, dude, 
I hired you till 11. We're done at 11. I go, how many baseball games have you sat in at the fifth inning and thought, oh, my God, can this end now? Because it's not going to get better. And he's like, okay, I trust you. And I ended, and literally by 11 o'clock, we ended at 1040. At 11 o'clock on the dot, there was maybe six people out of 100. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. We were going. And there's no way to stop. And I've gone, I don't know about you guys, but I've probably done that at a hundred weddings where I've gone up to the couple and said, you know what? There's a mass exodus because people at weddings are followers. They're not leaders. They expect to be fed and they'll dance and they'll drink and they'll do this and that, but they don't know when. So you have to tell them we're doing a toast. We're doing a cake cutting. When they're ready to leave, other people see them and go, oh, I guess I'll leave too. And there are times I've said to couples, just because you have me till 11 and you have the venue, you may want to find out that 10, 15 is the time to end. The expression I got from someone years ago was weddings should end, not when they should end, but when they shouldn't end. Meaning if you have a hundred people and it's raging, that's genuinely a nice time to end the wedding. Let's, because, let's quit while you're ahead kind of thing. Right, mm-hmm. Just like John said, because in a half an hour, an hour, there's going to be you, the groom, three wedding party members, your parents, and that's it. And yeah, that's yeah. not a great memory. The memory that's- is, how was your wedding? Oh, my God. Like, right at the, the last song, everyone was still there. We were raging and dancing and partying. It was awesome because you're going to hear from other brides, it was good. I mean, the end of the night, there was only like five people left. Right. Well, to me, that's a failure. Mm-hmm. And I tell couples, like you said, John, about 12 to 12, it's in my contract. You can always add time. You can't take it away. So I'll tell people that are like, it's going to be nine hours. I'm like, hire me for six and let's figure it out that night. But no, we have the, I know you have the venue, but that doesn't matter. The venue is not doing another wedding at 10 o'clock at night. (laughs) If your wedding ends at midnight, you know what happens? You're going to get out around 20 of one. Last call is going to be coming up. The bars are too packed to go to. You're done. Everyone has gone to bed. Let's say you ended at 10. Now you're out of there at 1030. You might meet your friends, your family, your grandparents, whoever in the lobby of their hotel for a drink. Hang out with them and then go to bed. Like, I think there's this there's this mentality of the wedding has to be and it doesn't. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you think. You know, my bride on Saturday night had a great time, everything. I more or less walked her into the ending of the night. We ended at quarter of 10. The wedding was over at 10. There's a noise variance. That venue is really under under the gun for noise. She was more than happy the way I ended it. And they made a big circle. And the only thing that bothered me was, even though the crowd wasn't the right crowd, my head said, oh, I should have played Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. I should have done the kick dance because they did the big circle and they did the kick dance. And I can't even remember now what the last song, their last song of the night was something kind of, it was country. It was like, you know, Keith Urban, something or other. But the point is you, you look at that, that opportunity because like I said, there's two weddings, great and good. Good weddings end when they, you know, at the end of the night and there's whoever's left great endings are the ones where everyone says, man, I wish that had gone another hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The leave them wanting more. Yeah. You're right. Is, is the point that I think you're trying to make the one thing that, well, a couple things I will say just because I don't know when I'll get a chance to talk again. I'll <laughs> get it in now. First of all, there's a passive aggressive little thing. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I get that from my mother. She's very much that way. <laughs> so anyway, first thing is, You're going to have some people in your audience that no matter how well you end are still going to be screaming at you to play one more song. Right. Because they've had alcohol in them. You can't please them. They're actually done, but they don't. They were done a long time ago, but they just don't know it yet. But for your average wedding goer, I think it's very important to pick the right song to end on. I've done it before where I've read the crowd wrong. And I played the wrong song to end. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody's last song of the night. And I drop it thinking it's going to be amazing. Like, uh, and you're like, oh my God, what did I do here? <laughs> yeah. I, I've done it. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I'm, I'm not here to tell you hero stories all night. I'm here to tell you failures too. It's happened. So I, I'm really conscious of trying to make sure that whatever I put on is going to hit well with the audience that's in front of me. Now, the audience that's in front of me, as Jay was talking about, sometimes you lose people. And it's been my experience at, at the events that I'm doing here in my region that that last hour is usually the diehard party hour. And anything goes. So it's a very different group than I had two hours previous. Mm -hmm. So I have to consider what this group is going to enjoy. I don't really have to worry about you know who was there earlier. I need to play something this group's going to love. And you can do dumb stuff. Like if you, I don't know, for instance, and I've done this, where it's like, okay, this is the last song of the night, folks, and I hope you don't mind. Uh, my heritage, we're Irish. I want to play some Irish folk music for you. Like, uh, then you put on House of Pain's Jump Around. And it's like, it's an under promise, very over deliver kind of situation. And it's a very high energy song. It's a fun You're off run. to Boston or something. Yeah. Murphy's. Yeah. Well, I mean, what? But everybody knows Jump Around. You know, it's a sports anthem. Uh, Shipping off to Boston is, is, a, is a really good one if they know it. Right, but I have found that not Again, everyone is a right. dropkick Murphy's person, but some are 